This video is going to be about dilations. Uh, in this video, we're going to be working through some of the parts of section 4.1 from your eighth grade book, so hopefully you have that handy. Uh, if not, then you're going to have to uh, take some extra notes on a separate sheet of paper, do some extra drawings. So we're not actually going to do anything on this page. Let's turn to the next page, page 176, and take a look here. You can go ahead and read the information at the top, giving you definitions for all of these really good words, dilation, scale factor, enlargement. Uh, and in fact, speaking of enlargement, that's what they have happening right here. Our original triangle is triangle ABC, which is showing up here lighter. And we are creating the image A prime, B prime, C prime by making a dilation. Now, when we've talked about dilations briefly in the past, we haven't really talked about how to create a dilation. And they're demonstrating that here for you. P is the center of dilation. And from there, we are expanding out. So that is how we are going to enlarge triangle ABC, is we are creating lines from P through each of the vertices in our original triangle, and we're extending those lines out not just extending them, but doing so in a very measured way. If I put the zero of my ruler on point P, and I come around here and I measure to point A, it looks like that is about 44 millimeters. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it's like 43 and a half, actually, to me. And then if I extend that out to A prime, all right, so that's 87, 88 millimeters. So what have they done? They have doubled this distance from P to the vertex A, whether it's A or A prime. And then for B, let's take a look. Looks like that's about 35, 36 millimeters. And we go out to B prime, which is here, and that is about 72 millimeters. So again, they've doubled the distance. And when I compare from point P, again my center of dilation, to C and C prime. So out to C, it looks like 55 millimeters. And out to C prime, we're at about 110, 111 millimeters. Um, so again, they've doubled that distance. By doubling that distance to A prime, B prime, C prime, and then connecting them to make a triangle, we have enlarged our original triangle to create a dilation that's a similar triangle. Um, what would the scale factor be from here to here? Well, you can find that scale factor not just by comparing the ratio of side lengths, but we can also make this ratio down here the distance of the image from the center of dilation compared with the distance of the original from the center of dilation. And to kind of simplify that down, you've seen this before, right? It's image over original. And the distance to the image, right, compared with the distance to the original in all of our cases, A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime, was approximately two to one. So the scale factor there is two. And this question is asking, is it more than one, less than one, equal to one? Which one is it? Well, obviously greater than one. And why does that make sense? Because that's the type of scale factor we have when we are enlarging a picture. We want to make sure that we are creating something larger, so we are multiplying by a scale factor bigger than one. In this case, everything got doubled. If I wanted to prove that these are now similar, I could go through and use some of those similarity theorems we talked about. Uh, and that's actually what the next page wants you to do. It wants you to go through and take some measurements to prove to yourself that they're similar. Or you can take my word for it, and we can keep moving. Let's go to page 178. On page 178, notice at the top, reductions. This time we're talking about a dilation that reduces the size of our figure. So in this case, DEF, again the lighter triangle, is our original triangle. Uh, and we know that because D prime, E prime, F prime, right? When you attach those single quotations, those prime marks indicate that this is the copy. And from our original to our copy, right, things have gotten shrunk down. So this is a reduction of the original. Now again, if I start measuring my distances from the center of the dilation to each of the points, so to D, it looks like we're at about 
44 millimeters. And uh, sorry, excuse me, that's to D prime. Let's look to D. D looks like it's about 88 millimeters. D prime is about 44 millimeters. And when I look at E, so from P to E, that's out here, that looks like about 72 millimeters. And to E prime is about 36 millimeters. And then again with my zero on P, and if I go to uh, F and F prime here, I know it may be hard to read the ruler in the glare, but out to F, it's looking like maybe 112 millimeters. And out to F prime, about 56 millimeters. So when I want to find that ratio again of image over original, and again, this time we're not talking about side lengths, we're talking about the distance from the center of dilation to the points in those shapes, right? I would have to pick a pair of corresponding vertices like E and E prime. So the distance from the center of uh, dilation to the image over the distance to the original. And again, when I reduce that, I'm going to get one half. Specifically with E and E prime, I think we found it was 72 millimeters um, out to the original and 36 millimeters out to the image. So when you reduce that fraction, it reduces to one half. But you would get that same reduced scale factor no matter which pair of corresponding vertices you chose. Um, is that scale factor less than one, equal to one, or greater than one? Well, it's less than one. And again, that makes sense because when I'm using a scale factor less than one, that's, cre that's what creates smaller images when compared to the original, right? Um, we want scale factors less than one in that case. So let's now move to page 80. Here it's asking you to draw your own. And if I'm going to use a scale factor of two, is that going to create a larger or smaller figure? Oh, well, it's going to create a larger one. I want to keep my zero on letter P. So I kind of have to turn it this way. And actually, I'm going to have to turn my paper. Sorry, guys. Things are getting crazy here. So from zero to W there, it looks like it's four centimeters. So out to eight centimeters to get W prime. And from zero to X, that looks to be about four and a half centimeters. So I continue on the same trajectory, make sure everything's lined up, which can be difficult. So if I double four and a half, that gets me up to a distance of nine. So that is X prime. And from P to Y, from P to Y, that looks to be about a distance of three centimeters. So I would want to go out to, yeah, I would want to go out to six centimeters. And there is Y prime. And then I can connect those side lengths. Oh, I overshot my X. Hopefully you're doing this in pencil so that if you draw too far, you can erase that extra bit. And so there is my image, the triangle W prime, X prime, Y prime, and it's been enlarged by a scale factor of two. If you wanted to do that again, there is an opportunity to do that later on. Um, right now, I want to show you how we can dilate on the coordinate plane. Now on page 181, coordinate planes make dilations pretty easy, especially when we can use the origin as our center of dilation. Uh, we've talked about this briefly in class, but I can keep using my ruler and measuring and putting zero at my center of origin and measuring out from there. In fact, I can do that, so let's do that one time. So from here to here, that's about 2.5 centimeters. So I'd want to go out five centimeters and put right, A prime out here. But I want you to notice, what are the coordinates of A prime? The coordinates of A prime, x coordinate is six, so those happen at 6, 14. How do those coordinates compare to our original coordinates of 3, 7? Oh, those are just doubled, which makes sense since my scale factor is 2. That's why coordinate planes can make our um, dilation is a lot easier. Now instead of having to measure so much, uh, I can just use the coordinates and in, again when my center of dilation is at the origin, I can just multiply my coordinates by the scale factor. So instead of measuring to get C prime, 
Well, C is at 3, 3, so C prime, I'm going to have to double each of those and get to 6, 6 to get to C prime. And B is at 7, 3, so B prime is going to be, when I double both of those, I get to 14, 6. So there's B prime. And connect my dots. So there is the image triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. When I have a case like this, and I'm using the origin as the center of my dilation, and I'm just multiplying my coordinates by whatever the scale factor is, I can actually represent that algebraically. I would call the original coordinates, I can give that kind of the generic description of being at x, y. So the image is going to be located, in this case, what did I do to those coordinates? I doubled them, so I would show 2x, 2y. When I multiply both my x and y coordinates by the same number, then I'm creating a dilation with that coefficient as the scale factor and with the origin as the center of dilation. Let's turn now to the next page, page 182. They've given us the exact same triangle to start with in the uh, same location as the last one, but we need to draw it this time. So A is at 3, 7. There's A. B is at 7, 3. There's B. And C is at 3, 3. This time I'm not labeling those coordinates. We have them at the top if we need to see them. But I want you to pay close attention to what the instructions on part A tell us. Using point C as the center of dilation. So this I'm not going to be able to just multiply the coordinates by our scale factor. I am going to have to pay attention to the distances. But luckily, the distances on a coordinate plane are a little bit easier to find. So if C is my center of dilation, sure, I could measure with a ruler, but what is the distance from C to A? Since it's vertically along a grid line, I can just count one, two, three, four spaces from C to A. So now if I want to triple that, to create an image that has a scale factor of 3, then instead of going 4 spaces vertically, I need to go 12 spaces vertically. So from my coordinate of 3, I need to go up 12 spaces. That's going to get me up here at 15. So this is where A prime is going to be. Now to get from C to B, I would need to go 4 spaces horizontally. So when I triple that to create my image, I'm going to need to go 12 spaces horizontally. And so again, coordinate of, uh, x coordinate of 3. So I'm going to go out to 15 this direction. So there's my b prime. Now what about c? Well, how far is c from my center of dilation, which is itself? It's zero spaces away. So it's going to stay zero spaces away. And this point c is also going to be c prime. So now, what this is allowing me to do is to create some nested triangles where point C is the common point for both triangles. In fact, because it's common, you don't actually have to give it this other name of C prime. You can still refer to it as point C. In this case, because C was the center of my dilation instead of the origin, I cannot write an algebraic rule to represent this type of dilation. Now let's move down to number four on the same page. And I'm actually going to have you look at something different. We've looked at the case where you can have the center of dilation as the origin on a coordinate plane. We've looked at the case where you can have the center of dilation as one of the actual vertices in the shape. But now I want us to show a center of dilation that is inside the shape that we're dilating. So instead of using this point P off to the side, let's put a point P somewhere inside our shape. Uh, I'm just going to put it here. I'm totally randomly selecting that place, somewhere in the middle. Uh, it will help you draw it if it is not too close to one of the vertices and you give yourself a little bit of space, but don't worry about being exactly in the same spot I am. So I want my zero to be on point P in the center of my dilation. And what is the distance from zero to, sorry, from P to K? And it looks like it's about three centimeters, maybe 3.1, 31 millimeters. So when I do half of that distance, because they tell us to use a scale factor of one half, that gets me to about 15, 16 millimeters, which is about right there. So there is K prime. 
I still want to keep my zero on point P. So I gotta rotate my ruler around. And from zero to point J, looks to be about 11 millimeters. So I would want 5.5 millimeters, which is about there. There is J prime. And I keep rotating my ruler, and from point P to point H, that looks to be about 37 millimeters. So I would want half of that, which is, what is that, 18 and a half? So that would be about right there. So there is H prime. And when I connect these points, I've created a dilation within my original figure since I shrunk it down. So notice when my center of dilation is inside my original figure, then we're kind of zooming in and zooming out, but centering everything on this point so the figures are contained within each other. These are the problems I want you to do now. On page 183, uh, do problem number 5a, which is where it asks you to draw the dilation. And then tell me off to the side, is that creating an enlargement or a reduction? And what is the algebraic rule that would give you that same image? Then go to page 185 and 186, and instead of answering all the talk to talk questions, you can leave out questions 5 and 6. Do 1 through 4 and number 7. Pause now. All right, let's see how we did. So on page number 5, sorry, on number 5 on page 183, this is what you should have created. So A prime is at 1, 7, B prime is at 7, 3, and C prime is at 3, 3. So this triangle is our image, A prime, B prime, C prime. That obviously creates a reduction of our original. And because my scale factor was 1 half and my center of origin was uh, used as the center of dilation, then I can write the algebraic rule 1 half x, 1 half y. Now let's look at the answers to your talk the talk questions. For the first question, right, the relationship between dilated figures, uh, these corresponding angles in dilated figures, is that they're congruent. Because when you're dilating a shape, you're creating similar figures. So all those rules we learned about similar figures still apply here. That includes on number two, that our corresponding side lengths amongst our dilated figures are going to be proportional. When you go to number three, does the dilation result in an image that's the same shape? Yes, because dilations make similar figures. And we know in similar figures they are the same shape, but dot, 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 they are different sizes. So the answer for number four is no, they are not the same size. They are different sizes in our dilated similar figures. Last but not least, uh, on number seven here, right? This ratio of image to original. Notice they give it into you in ratio form but I'm writing it in fraction form. It's the same ratio, same comparison of two numbers. Um, but when we do that ratio, that's basically the scale factor ratio. So if my scale factor is less than one, that's because I'm making a reduction. If it's greater than one, I'm creating an enlargement of my original. And we didn't look at this so much, but if my scale factor is equal to one, then it's going to be the same size and the same shape, so that's going to be a congruent figure. If you uh, want more practice, you can look through the rest of this uh, section that we didn't do and consider trying some of those other problems out.